Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll discuss about Magic T Junction. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. I'll explain basics, working and scattering parameters of Magic T Junction in this video. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of Magic T Junction. See Magic T is a combination of E plane T and H plane T. In my earlier videos, I have already covered E plane T and H plane T in this video lecture series of microwave engineering. Here with magic T, we have in total four ports. See, this is port number one. This is port number two. This is port number three, that is H arm. That is this port. And this is port number four, that is E arm. That is this port. So in total, four ports are there with magic T junction. See here we have E arm and H arm. This E arm and H arm, those are perfectly matched arms. Means return loss at port four and at port three is zero. Return loss means if you give input at that port, then reflection at that port will be zero, right? So E arm and H arm, those are perfectly matched arms and port 1 and port 2, these two ports, those are symmetric with respect to E arm and H arm. You can observe, see these two ports, port 1 and port 2, that is symmetric with respect to E arm, that is also symmetric with respect to H arm. This E arm and H arm, those are perfectly matched arms and they are isolated from each other. Isolated from each other means if you give input at E arm, then output at H arm will be zero. And if you give input at H arm, then output at E arm will be zero, right? Means E arm and H arm, those are isolated from each other, right? As I have told you, this magic T, that is a combination of E plane T and H plane T. So if you give input at E arm, then output at port 1 and at port 2 that is equal in magnitude and that is out of phase. Out of phase means phase difference in between port 1 and port 2 will be of 180 degree but magnitude wise that is equal and signal will be out of phase with each other if you give input at E arm and if you give input at H arm then output at port 1 and at port 2 that is equal in magnitude and that is in phase means there is zero degree phase shift in between port 1 and port 2. So that is how basic working and structure is there with E plane T junction. Now I'll explain you scattering parameters calculation with magic T junction. Magic T is four port device so size of scattering matrix with magic T is four cross 4. So here we have magic T scattering matrix that is having size of 4 cross 4. Our agenda is to identify values of these scattering parameters. So first of all you need to understand what is the meaning of Sij that is in general form of scattering parameter. See Sij that is B divided by A where B is normalized output voltage divided by a is normalized input voltage. Here this I explains output port, this I explains output port and this J explains input port. These are the basics that one should know before you go for derivation of this scattering parameters. Now I will derive these scattering parameters based on working of magic T. See here magic T is having E arm and H arm those are perfectly matched arms means return loss at port 4 and at port 3 is 0 means S33 and S44 is 0. So as this E arm and H arm are perfectly matched arms one should know S33 and S44 that is 0 right. See here this E arm and H arm, these two arms are perfectly isolated with each other. Means if you give input at E arm, then output at H arm will be zero. And if you give input at H arm, 
then output at em will be zero means you will be having s34 and s43 those are zero as em and hm those are isolated with each other s34 and s43 that will be zero one should know what is the meaning of this see s34 means if you give input at 4 then output at 3 will be 0 that is s34 and if you give input at 3 then output at 4 will be 0 means that is s43 right now here there are a few more things that you need to understand see in this magic t e arm that is having property which indicates phase difference in between port 1 and port 2 let me explain you how see if you give input at e arm if you give input at e arm then that will be bisected into port 1 and into port 2 but here there will be 180 degree phase difference because of which if you want to calculate s14 and s24 then that will be having equal magnitude but that will be having negative polarity with each other so as per em property input at em that is resulting into equal output at port 1 and port 2 but there is 180 degree phase shift means s14 that is equals to minus of s24 now i'll explain you hm property see with hm if you give input over here then that will be equally bisected into port 1 and port 2 and that is having zero phase difference in between port 1 and port 2 means s13 and s23 that will be equal with hm right so as if you give input at port 3 output at port 1 and at port 2 is equal and in phase means s13 and s23 those are equal now i'll apply property of symmetry means sij is equals to sji using this property of symmetry we can minimize number of elements to be calculated like if you want to calculate s12 then as per property of symmetry sij is sji means s12 will be s21 if you want to calculate s13 that is this element then that will be s31 and as per the working s13 that is s23 so here you can mention s23 as well and s23 is s32 that is how we can minimize number of elements to be calculated here s14 that we need to understand s14 is s41 right and here if you observe working then s14 that is minus of s24 right and s24 is s42 so here we can mention this equals to minus s42 right now what i'll do is i'll apply this properties in this scattering matrix to minimize this scattering matrix here as i have explained the s11 s22 that is having nothing to do over here but if you observe s33 and s44 that is zero so i'll place it over here here we have zero value s34 and s43 that is also zero so i need to place zero over here and if you observe s12 is equals to s21 so instead of s21 i'll write s12 and if you observe s13 so that is s31 so instead of s31 i'll write s13 that is s23 as well so instead of s23 i'll write s13 and that is s32 as well so here also i'll write s13 if you observe s14 so that is s41 so here instead of s41 i'll write 
S14. And here, if you observe, this is negative of minus of S24. So instead of S24, I can write minus of S14. And that is also minus of S42. So instead of this, I can write minus of S14. So that is how we can minimize this scattering matrix. Now, with this scattering matrix, by applying identity property, we can identify the values of this scattering parameters. Identity property explains that S into S conjugate that is equals to identity matrix. So here we have S matrix. With this S matrix, we need to multiply conjugate of this matrix that will be identity matrix. So here we need to apply S into S conjugate. So here we have S matrix into S conjugate that we need to have. So here I'll give conjugate to each and every element. And multiplication of this is identity matrix. Identity matrix is having diagonal that is 1 and other elements are 0. Now having this matrix multiplication, we can identify these parameters. So first of all, I'll apply row 4 into row 4. So if you multiply fourth row over here with these two matrix, you will be having S14 square plus S14 square that is equals to 1. So based on that, one can say S14 that is 1 by root 2. Now I'll multiply third row with third row. If you multiply third row with third row, then we'll be having S13 square plus S13 square that is equals to 1. Based on that, one can say S13 that is equals to 1 by root 2. Now I'll multiply second row with second row. So if you multiply second row with second row, then we will be having S12 square plus S22 square plus S13 square plus S14 square that is equals to 1. If you carefully observe S13 and S14 that is 1 by root 2 means square of this that is half and half means half and a half is added over here that is resulting into 1 and if you take 1 on other side you will be having S12 square plus S22 square that is equals to 0 right. Now I'll multiply this first row with first row. So if you multiply first row with first row, you will be getting S11 square plus S12 square plus S13 square plus S14 square that is equals to 1. Here also S13 square and S14 square that we need to substitute. So half plus half 1, if you take it on other side, you will be getting S11 square plus S12 square that is equals to 0. Now from these equations, we can understand one thing. See, here S12 square plus S22 square is there and that is equals to 0. That is possible only if S12 is 0 and S22 is 0, right? And S11 square plus S12 square is 0. That is possible only if S11 is 0 and S12 is 0. So now we have all the elements, right, that we can substitute in scattering matrix, which we have simplified, that is this one. So with this scattering matrix, if you observe S13 and S14, that is 1 by root 2. So here, S13 and S14, that is 1 by root 2, that I need to place. Be careful, here we have negative sign, right? And if you observe S12, S22, S11, S12, so that is 0, means these four elements are 0. I hope now it is clear to you how one can have scattering matrix of magic T. If you observe this scattering matrix, then in this scattering matrix, after a derivation, one can say, Return loss at port 1 and at port 2 is also 0. 
Till if anything that you like to share, just note it down in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.